it's April from April's Home and today I thought I would take you on a tour of my spring garden. This is my first vlog, my first garden vlog of 2020 so I thought I'd um, walk around a little bit and show you what's going on in the garden and how I'm preparing for the spring gardening season. This is one of my apple trees. You can see all of the beautiful blossoms here. They're just absolutely beautiful. Um, I just think that this tree is so pretty here. Last year we had a couple apples from it and I'm so excited to see how many we'll have this year. It's a very young tree. So I just thought I'd show you that and now we'll go ahead and head over to the vegetable garden. Before we head to the vegetable garden too, I thought I would show you some of these cute little grape hyacinths that I planted last year underneath this pine tree. You can see quite a bit of weeds. I have a ton of weeding to do, um, but I just think that these little plants are so cute. I love that they've popped up under this tree and I've planted them around a bunch of little trees this year. Okay, so here is the spring garden. You can see I have one bed weeded and I've amended the soil with a little bit of peat moss and a little bit of steer manure. So I have that one ready to go. I've planted here one of my little tomatoes. I still need to clear out the sedum in this bed and I need to pick up some of my little garden, um, little rocks and things and move them so that I can get my other tomato plant uh, in here. The sedum that we have grows all through the yard. I have so many different varieties and what I do is I kind of weed around it and lift it up and plant it where I like it to grow. Here is another example of that. You can see this pot has just been taken over with these sedums. It's very pretty, but I um, want to put a little blueberry in here. It's a really tiny blueberry, so I think I'm gonna let it grow in here for a little while until it gets bigger. So I will be working on this little flower pot. Here you can see some of my chives growing. I've got a couple more blueberries here to plant as well. Here I have some basil growing. And I've started um, some little tiny hens and chicks in this little planter here. I just put it up here for now so I wouldn't um, tip it over. Of course I'm going to move it so that the uh, basil have plenty of room to grow. Here's a little flower pot with some parsley. I've got flat leaf and curly. This one I transplanted, so it's looking a little sad, but I think it'll come back here um, with a little bit more water in a couple more days. And here's another blueberry I planted. This is an interesting one. It is a pink lemonade blueberry. So I thought I'd keep it here up close where I can um, kind of watch over it and see how well it does. And this pot here is all empty and ready for me to plant a gooseberry bush that I bought for it. So I will be planting that later today and show you what that looks like. Here's another bed that we've finished. I've got this all cleared out, amended and planted. I've got um, quite a few jalapeno peppers in there. I think a bell pepper. And in the back row I have some Roma tomatoes. And in the corners of all my vegetable gardens I plant little marigolds. I feel like it looks very pretty and it might help keep insects, uh, the bad insects away a little bit. Um, and even if they don't, they look really pretty. So here are some of the other plants and seeds that I'll be working on this week. Here I have uh, an artichoke, a couple artichokes. This one's looking a little uh, limp here. I need to give that a little bit more water and get that in the ground hopefully today. I have a couple more chives to tuck in somewhere, some thyme to get planted. Here's another little marigold. I've got some marigolds to tuck into all the corners. Some cilantro here, some more thyme. I think this is, yes, this is a lemon thyme. I've got some moss, both Scotch and Irish. Here's another little cherry tomato, some dill, and then one of my most favorite plants to plant every year. I love this. This is Corsican mint. So it's this lovely little sort of a ground cover and it smells wonderful. It smells very minty. And then over here I have some nasturtium, some oregano, some kale, some more Corsican mint. And this here is some pineapple sage that I thought I would try out as well. And then for seeds, I don't have all my seeds yet. I'm waiting for a few more shipments to arrive, but I have some summer squash. This is a yellow variety and some acorn squash. I have some more kale that I'll be starting inside and some pumpkin. And then my favorite bean here, it's a bush bean. Blue Lake 47. That's what I'll be planting in this bed here. Actually half this bed will be Blue Lake and the other half will be some purple um, beans that I'm waiting on. And then I have some zinnia seeds and lettuce seeds that I'll also be starting. And I'm waiting on some sunflower seeds as well. Here's another zinnia. I love this one. It's called Envy. I grow this zinnia almost every year. It's a pretty like chartreuse light green color. I really love that. And then one of my experiments this year, I'm growing black beans and Anasazi beans. So those I will grow and let them dry. I actually did grow those successfully years and years ago. This is a really small garden for that, but I thought I would try it anyway. 
So as you can see, I have a ton of cleanup to do in here and the rest of the beds. I'm kind of working my way down the way. Um, I gotta get the weeds out and amend everything. This is my little garlic patch here. This half did really well. This half didn't come up at all. Um, only a few little teeny tiny wispy garlics there. So I'm kind of disappointed in that variety. I need to look up in my garden journal and see what variety this one was so I don't order it again. But that is okay, we will have plenty of garlic from this half and then in the back is some elephant garlic. And then here you can just see lots of weeding. I've got some flowers tucked in here that I need to move. Lots more weeding. I need to really um, tend to my herb garden here. It's gotten really overgrown. So I'm gonna trim that up, get those weeds out, and plant some more of my herbs in here. I've got more rosemary, different kinds of sage, and different kind of thyme, and that's what I will um, go ahead and plant in this bed. And down here you can see my little gooseberry bush, and then down here this is a currant. And I've grown currants the last couple of years, so I am excited to add another currant bush as well. So definitely a ton of weeding to do, but that's okay. That's how I start the gardening year every year. A lot of weeding and I go one bed at a time and then I get it planted. So that is my project for this week. I'm gonna get these in and keep working on each bed until they all look planted up like this or seeds are in and all the weeds are gone and the soil is amended. And then I have another really exciting project that we're working on on the other side of my garden. My husband is building me a bed this weekend for asparagus. I bought some asparagus crowns here and I'm very, very excited to finally be putting in an asparagus bed. So I will show you what that looks like as we get that planted, but I just thought that I would show you that my asparagus has arrived and I'm really excited to get that planted as well. Okay, I got the rest of my seeds in the mail today. I thought I'd go over those with you real quick. I think that this is pronounced terroir or something like that. I'm not 100% sure, but this is the um, company that I use to purchase some of my uh, seeds. I was particularly interested in finding some of these Anasazi bush beans, so I was really happy that I found them at this company here. I'm gonna go ahead and get those in the ground hopefully today. And then also some of the uh, purple pod bush beans that I'll plant with some of my um, regular bush beans. And then some dwarf sugar peas. I'll get all these planted today. And then some of these I'm going to start inside and some I will get into the ground um, probably next week. Um, this is a black Russian sunflower and we've got the Van Gogh sunflower mix and the mammoth gray stripe sunflower. I'm gonna plant these in the other side of my garden near where I put all of my bird feeders. And I think that the, um, the birds will really enjoy those. And I think that they'll look really pretty. I'm trying to come up with a solution for things that my dog will not destroy. We'll see how he uh, does with some flowers. And then also I thought I'd plant some more uh, dwarf blue corn flowers. I love these little bachelor buttons. Usually they self seed in my garden, but uh, this year only a few came up. So it's time to replant. And then I love zinnias. This is the cut and come again zinnia mix. So I'll be planting some of those. Might plant some inside first and then some directly outside. I'm not sure yet. And then also some of this uh, Vates blue curled kale. I'm going to start this inside. Um, I may or may not use this as a fall crop. I'm not 100% sure. I do have some that I just got planted in the garden. I'll show you that in a minute. And then this is some Frise endive. Definitely gonna start this inside and then bring it out here into a pot so I can really carefully watch over that. I've never grown this before, but I absolutely love it in salad. So I'm hoping I can get it to grow nicely. And then some um, medium hot peppers, some jalapenos. And then these, um, I think it's Natapino sweet peppers. I'd like to try these as well. So those are some of my additional seeds. Now I'm gonna go ahead and get to work uh, weeding the garden and prepping it for some of these things that I'm gonna plant today. While I'm doing that, I thought I would share with you one of my soup recipes. This is such a yummy soup. It is a Tuscan sausage potato soup. This is one of the soups that we had for dinner this week and it was absolutely wonderful. So I thought I would go ahead and share that recipe with you now while I work a little bit in the garden and then I'll come back and show you what I've done. 
Okay, so before I head out to the garden to get some of my weeding and planting done, I thought that I would go ahead and start today's soup. Today I'll be making a Tuscan potato sausage soup, and you can see my ingredients laid out here. We've got potatoes, onions, celery, just uh, one package of Jimmy Dean's regular sausage, carrots, kale, and I'm using cans of chicken broth this time. I'm using four cans of these. Usually I would just use a carton or uh, whatever amount of chicken broth you have, just enough to add to this and I'll add water as well to bring it up to the level that I want. I will also be adding um, pepper, salt, Italian seasonings and um, things like that as it gets cooking and finishing it off with a little bit of milk at the end as well. But first I'm going to go ahead and get started how I start all of my soups. That is with my onion, my celery and my carrot. So I'm going to go ahead and get that chopped up and put into a large kitchen pot here and get that sauteing in a little bit of olive oil. So here's my celery all cut up into little pieces here. This is an entire bunch of celery. I'm going to go ahead now and put this in the pan and start it sauteing while I um, chop up my onion. So here it is in the pan again. I will turn that up probably to about medium high. Just hot enough to start it uh, sauteing a bit. Then I'll make sure to turn that down um, until I add the liquid so it doesn't uh, burn. I've also set aside all of my scraps here um, to bring out to my chickens. The broken pieces and the tops and whatnot. I always love to bring those as a treat for my chickens. And now I'm adding in my onion, all chopped up. Okay, the onions and celery are sauteing here nicely. And I've also chopped up my carrots. This time I only had some fresh baby carrots. This looks like about a cup and a half. I don't use a ton of carrots in this recipe, but I always like a little bit for color and flavor. So I've just chopped up a couple handfuls of baby carrots into little teeny uh, coins. You could also use regular carrots, of course. I think with this soup, a smaller um, cut up uh, carrot is a little bit nicer so you don't have the big chunks, but um, either way would really work just fine. So now I'm going to go ahead and get these sauteing as well. So the carrots, onions, and celery are all sauteing nicely. Now I'm going to go ahead and add in my chicken broth here. So I'm just going to pour in the four cans there and get it nice and covered here so it can continue cooking down the veggies. Okay, so the broth is added. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of seasonings. I do this to taste. First, I'm gonna add a little bit of sea salt here, just a few shakes to get it started, as well as some pepper. Again, a few shakes of that, and I always season my soups at the beginning, middle, and end. I definitely taste it after the middle there, see what needs adjusting, and then right at the end to make sure that it's flavorful enough. And then I'm going to add in some Italian seasoning here, um, just a nice blend of different Italian seasonings. This one has oregano, marjoram, thyme, basil, and parsley. And I'm gonna go ahead and stir that in, bring this back up to a simmer, and let those veggies cook a little bit um, while I prep the rest of the ingredients. So these are the rest of the ingredients here. I've got a couple cloves of garlic, that I will add towards the end. I'm gonna go ahead and cook up this sausage here and drain it um, and set that aside. I'll clean and slice up these potatoes to add again towards the end. I don't want the potatoes getting overcooked. So I like to add them when all the other veggies are cooked and then I add them in with the sausage so that they can cook up. And at the very end, again, I add the garlic and the kale. And you don't want to add the kale right away. You want to add this right at the end. It only takes, oh, maybe 20 minutes, half hour, depending on how hot your soup is to cook this into your soup. So these will uh, wait here for a while. I'll, again, I'll go ahead and cook this up and drain it. And I'll be back to show you as I add each of these ingredients as the soup uh, cooks up a bit in those veggies, the uh, carrots, celery, and onion get cooked up and add a lot of flavor to that broth. Again, here you can see the broth is getting nice and steamy. And again, I'll bring this to a low simmer. I'll put the lid on and let those veggies cook up. And I will be adding more water as the soup boils down and at the very end milk. But I will show you all those steps. And before I head back out to the garden while I let this soup simmer away, thought I'd share with you what I've been doing with the ends of my celery here. I keep seeing this online and I really wanted to try it. So the last soup I made, I did start one here. I've put it into a little bowl here, just a leftover Cool Whip tub and I change the water out every day. You can see it's just now little teeny tiny root there starting to root. You can see it's already um, starting to grow there. It grows from the center out and then I'll remove some of these little outer stalks here and when I, I get a few more roots I'll go ahead and plant this in some soil. So I'm going to go ahead and start this one as well and before you know it I'll have a whole garden of celery. It's a fun experiment and it'll be really neat to see if this really works. Okay so my soup is cooking away the uh, 
carrots and celery and onions are nice and soft now so I'm gonna go ahead and cut up my potatoes here I've got seven um, little russet potatoes here and these are a little bit on the small side they're usually a little bit bigger than this but these ones are small so I'm gonna go ahead and cut up these seven here and see if this is enough if not I will add more and I'll let you know how many I end up adding I'm not gonna peel these I like this recipe with the peels on I will of course cut away any damaged parts but otherwise I'm gonna leave the skin on and slice these up and then probably cut the slices in half or in quarters um, just depending on the size. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. I chopped up all seven potatoes. You can see some of them are in quarters, some are in halves here. Um, and I think that these seven potatoes look like they'll be just enough for us here. I've also cooked up my pound of sausage. Now if you wanted to stretch this meal and make it a little bit larger, you have a bigger family perhaps, you can just double up some of these ingredients. I would definitely double up the sausage if I was serving this to a larger um, family. And then also I am going to add two cups of water and some of my garlic here. I'm going to go ahead and put that through the garlic press and add that to the soup as well. So first I'll go ahead and add the water there and add the sausage. And I've also added the potatoes here. It looks like I need a little bit more water, so I'm going to go ahead and add another two cups of water. Okay, so here's another two cups of water. There we go. That looks a little bit better. Just enough to kind of cover all the veggies and potatoes. I'm going to go ahead and stir this up here now. And then now this will cook. I'll bring this back to a nice little simmer, a little bit of a medium simmer until the potatoes are cooked through. Again, I'm going to go ahead now and add the garlic and some more of my seasonings. So a little bit more salt and pepper and a little bit more Italian seasoning. You do not need a lot of salt in this recipe. The sausage is salty. So I'm just going to add a few shakes in there. And again, I'll test that at the end before I add in my last bit of salt to make sure it is a uh, salty enough and flavorful enough. There's a little bit more um, Italian seasoning. It looks like a lot, but that's actually not very much. It's probably only a, a little bit less than a teaspoon there. And then a little bit more pepper. Again, you don't need a ton of pepper either. The sausage in this recipe really flavors this soup beautifully. So there's that. I'm going to go ahead and get my garlic press and add the garlic as well. Here's my garlic press. I've got it loaded with some garlic that I've peeled. Let me see if I can squeeze this. There we go. And you can see all the delicious minced garlic comes right out there. And I will scrape this off um, with the spatula and get it all stirred in. So I've added my garlic. That was just two cloves of garlic here. So you can see everything's added. Now I'm going to go ahead and let this cook. And I'll check the water level. Make sure it doesn't boil down too much. If so, I'll add another cup of water. When the potatoes are cooked, I'm going to go ahead and chop up my kale and then I'll be adding kale and then of course I'll add some milk here to turn this into a more creamy Tuscan potato sausage soup. So I'm going to go ahead and let this cook and I'll be back to show you the next step. Okay so the soup is cooking nicely. I've turned the heat down just a little bit so it wouldn't be steam steaming in the camera but now it is time to add the milk and the kale. So I've cleaned up a bunch of um, curly kale here and I've taken it off of its stems kind of just ripped it into little bite-sized pieces and I'm gonna go ahead now and get this into the soup here so it looks like a lot here but it really just cooks down completely and very quickly um, into the soup as it warms up here so I'm going to get that stirred in in a minute and then also I'm gonna go ahead now and add a cup of milk this is whole milk you could use um, probably 2% would be okay also as well as adding cream. Cream would be nice too. I don't have any today, um, but you could add a little bit of cream if you like a nice rich soup. But I didn't want to add uh, too much more fat to this because the sausage already has a lot. So um, I think that this will be plenty. I might add a little bit more here at the end. Um, let's see, maybe another little splash. There we go just to give it a nice creamy color here. Um, I've tasted it and determined that it needed a little bit more of all the seasonings here. So I'm going to add a little bit more pepper, a little bit more salt, and one last addition of Italian seasonings. And then I'll go ahead and stir that in and let this all cook up together. Give it a final taste 
and serve it up. So I'm going to go ahead and let this come back to a medium simmer and let the kale cook and let the flavors kind of all blend together and I'll be back to show you what it looks like when it's ready to serve. Okay so you can see the soup is bubbly and hot and the kale is all cooked up in there and the soup is ready to serve. I'm going to go ahead and serve this up. I'm going to sprinkle the top with a little bit of Parmesan cheese and a little tiny pat of butter since I didn't put uh, cream in this. The butter gives it a little bit of richness that is really nice. So I'm going to go ahead and serve up a bowl and show you what that looks like. So here is the soup all ready to go for dinner. You can see all the delicious uh, vegetables in there, the potatoes, the celery, the carrots, the onions, and kale with yummy pieces of sausage and yummy flavorful broth. So that is tonight's dinner, a Tuscan sausage potato soup really yummy meal here with some nice crusty french bread to go along with it a really nice soup i love how many vegetables are in this this is a really nice meal at the end of the day i hope you enjoyed taking a look at how i made our tuscan potato sausage soup okay so first up i'm going to go ahead and get my bush beans in i've got the royalty purple pod bush bean and the blue lake 47 bush bean and I'll be planting them right over here in this bed. I'm only going to plant a couple rows of the purple and then the rest will be the blue. I'm going to go ahead and get these laid down in rows and show you what that looks like. So you can see a little row here of beans and I'm going to go ahead and press those in and I'm just going to push them down in there and then kind of cover them over like that. So I'll go along and do that to all of these beans here just like that. Pat them in. And here you can see all of my blue lake beans all in a nice little row there. I have planted them pretty thick. They do um, sometimes have trouble germinating. I also made sure on both seeds to save some. Just in case these don't germinate, I can try again in a week or two. Um, so I'll keep close watch on those and we'll watch them come up. So I'm going to go ahead and get these planted now. Okay, now I'm getting my Anasazi bush beans planted. And let's see, it says that these need to be planted an inch deep every three to four inches. So I'm going to go ahead and do that in this space here. I've also got Got in some little marigolds at the front here and you can see how pretty these Anasazi beans are they have sort of a maroon and white speckle just think that they're really really pretty so I'm starting to get these laid out in their little rows here then I'll plant those one eight, one inch deep and on this half of the garden I'm going to go ahead and plant these little black beans and then lastly for today I'm going to go ahead and get these two little pots planted with my dwarf sugar peas here and let's see I've got um, some trellises in here. You can kind of um, not see them very well. I need to trim my grape a little tiny bit more. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go ahead and get these peas planted in these two pots. Okay, so here's the rest of the work that we got done today. Of course, we got our basil and parsley planted. I still need to work on getting those little blueberries planted. Over here, we have our green beans and purple beans planted, our peppers and tomatoes. Here, I have my little blueberry and my gooseberry all planted. And here I have the kale planted. You can see it all pretty and purple there, as well as some herbs. I planted dill and cilantro over here, and then the two artichokes. My two artichokes definitely are kind of getting uh, wilty from the sun. We are expecting rain tomorrow though, so I'm hoping they'll bounce right back. I decided to pop the oregano over here in my garlic bed where the garlic didn't come up. So I thought that that would be a nice place to tuck that in so I can kind of keep an eye on it. Um, I haven't grown oregano before, so I really want to kind of have this in a special spot and keep my eye on it. This bed I'm slowly working on clearing out. I have a lot of sedum in here that I need to transplant, so I'm kind of going slow with this one. This one I've got cleaned out pretty nicely. Uh, the gooseberries kind of doing okay and then we've got some bachelor buttons here still need to work on my herb garden and we've got this all cleared out waiting for the uh, sweet potato starts to arrive here we have our anasazi beans and black beans planted and here we have our um, peas planted and i'm getting this area all cleared out again i have a lot of sedum to transplant uh, to get ready for a little patch for currants so that is what I've done in the garden today and this week and tomorrow again will be a rainy day so we will see um, how long that lasts and it'll be good for the plants that I've planted. I am going to go ahead and give them a little bit more water today and um, then we'll see how much it rains and then we'll get back out here and work some more on the garden. So I'll come back next week to show how the garden has progressed and get the rest of these things planted here 
as well as some other projects I'm working on. Here's another look at the apple tree. You can see it's blossoming even more than earlier this week when I first showed you. It's absolutely beautiful. I just love it. So I hope you enjoyed taking a look at my garden this week, my first garden vlog of 2020, as well as seeing my recipe for Tuscan potato sausage soup. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, hit subscribe for more videos from April's home. Thank you so much for watching and I'll talk to you later. Goodbye.